if you don't already know this about the puppeteer your mind is going to be blown so take a look at my one skill here it's this lightning bolt i press one and then a little bit later the lightning comes out this is a big aoe and typically what you do as a survivor is you dodge it when you see the lightning coming however there's a new technique that has come out of the community regarding this lightning here watch how fast i can cast it three two a bam you don't even get a chance to react for some reason <laughs> when you're playing puppeteer as an elite unit you can cast one to do your lightning and if you basic attack through it your lightning will come down immediately and one trick i actually learned while i was sitting here getting ready to record this is take a look at this i can drive this car around on henry right well i'm gonna go ahead press one here and then drive as henry and you'll see i actually hit him while he's driving by me in the car Oh boy. Now, when something like this shows up in the community, I think it's important that people know about it so they know what to do about it. Because this is a PvP game, and whether you like it or not, people find these things out and they're going to use them against you. So, what I want to do in this video is educate people on both sides of how to be really good with it and also how to be really good at countering it, because there's definitely some strong counters to this. So, the basic structure of how this works for the puppeteer is they tend to spec a lot into traps. The reason being is at level three traps, you can spawn elite units on the map. And the reason why the traps are so important is because this whole build is based off of elite units. And if you go the portal elite route, it's very expensive compared to a trap. A trap only costs 25 infernal energy. I don't know if I have one laying around here, but typically if you've seen traps before, yeah, they cost about 25 infernal energy, which is nothing compared to what, the base 175 or something like that, that the portal elite starts with. Very expensive to do it via the portal route. So as you get traps set up, the survivors eventually run into them, right? And then you make your elite unit. And then after that, what you do is you press Q to use your power possess. The reason why you use power possession is you get massive buffs, not only to your power, but to your HP and the rate at which your energy declines is much slower than it would be on a regular possession. Oh, also the cooldowns on your units are much faster as well, which allows you to get more lightning out. So after you have your unit, you can be surrounded by literally all four of them. You go ahead, you press one, click, and then bam they don't even get time to react. And then what you can do is you can just split and make them deal with that. But typically what people do is they'll cast their lightning and then just run around. They don't get into a big fight. I mean, you could try meleeing them, but you could just run around and cast again. And just like that, the match is over. And that's how a lot of these matches feel like. Just like that, the match is over. So there's things you need to be looking out for on the survivor side with how to counter this, okay? And we're going to go over those because there's a ton of ways to just absolutely demolish this build. I know it looks scary and oh my goodness, what am I going to do if a puppeteer does this to me? But I, I promise you, you can absolutely put this thing in its place. Real quick, before we get into the survivor side though, I'm sure some of y'all will be wondering, well, what do you spec into? Here's what I'm currently using in my skill tree. I don't think it's the end all be all of how to do all this, but this works really well when I try to use this. You basically just go big elite damage and then some other stuff that's helpful such as scaling damage or decreasing the amount of time that your demonic dash has to cool down increasing the fear that type of stuff and a little bit of your economy because your economy is always in a rough spot as puppeteer which frankly is part of the reason why this build is in existence anyway because one of the things you're always trying to deal with as a puppeteer is a low amount of energy they do not have the same type of economy as a warlord or a necromancer so people gravitated towards this and then they started button mashing with lightning and left clicking trying to attack and then that's how this was born you could very easily be doing this already and not even be realizing that you're doing it it's very easy to accidentally cast very quickly and frankly there's so many of these things in this game this is something i do want to talk about because i think this is a point of contention i think people are looking at things like animation canceling with melee or the puke canceling on Henrietta, or the fart canceling, or this right here, this is what I call lightning. There's a lot of canceling words in here. And people are starting to think it's an exploit. And I can see where you're coming from. I don't think when you say that, that you're completely off base. At the same time, both sides do this. Both sides can do this. And it's such an easy, blatant thing to run into. I can't help but feel like the developers noticed this and just decided to keep it that way. It's it's way too easy to make this happen. It's not like you have to go through this crazy set of keystrokes and cancellations and dodge here, dodge that, step here, step. You literally press one and click to try and button mash and you're doing it. it, it it'd be way too easy to catch this in testing for me to feel like it's a mistake. So also, like I said before, it's a PVP game. People are gonna do this to you when they figure it out whether you like it or not. So you can either do it back or you can sit there and just be mad at people when they do it to you. They are going to eventually address it however they do. They're either going to say, we're keeping it in the game, or they're going to say, well, let's change it. 
I'm fine either way. What I'm trying to do today is just educate you on what's currently going on in the game. If they change things, then we'll talk about the changes in the future, okay? Now let's talk about the counters to this build. There's actually a ton of them. So in case you're worried, don't worry. One of the big things that you can do to counter right away is use Ed. Ed is extremely good at countering this. Reason why, and by the way, I think people have been saying Ed is a low tier character. Ed is probably one of the best characters in the game if you understand him. So what Ed can do is he has this special flashlight on his Q ability, his special ability. And whenever he turns on his flashlight, which by the way, lasts for 40 seconds, he just walks around and disables all the traps. So not only does he disable them, he keeps them disabled for a certain period of time. And if he shines it on the box that was already possessed, the box can't be repossessed. So <laughs> this is a really nice way to go ahead and just completely obliterate the build. You don't get traps. Well, you can't do this as a puppeteer because your economy was not going to keep up. You're going to get destroyed. By the way, if you get Ed really strong up to level 25, he gets this thing called Collector, which increases the chances of things dropping and the chances of your crates being higher level, which is just one of the best economy things in the whole game. And this whole game is about economy. So now other than Ed, the hunters are not good at dealing with this. Reason being is if you take a look at the puppeteer, something to know about these elite units is that they are actually resistant to ranged weapons. You can see right above my head. But there is something else that shows up here. Demi Eligosets cannot be knocked back unless their balance bar is fully depleted, which is exactly how you counter this. Let's say you don't have an Ed on the team and you're just having to deal with a lot of these little monsters running around. The way you deal with it is pouncing and stumbling. And the way you stumble is... <sighs> There's so many characters that are amazing at it. I mean, any of the warriors get really nice melee buffs, so just pick one and have fun with it. Henry's going to be nice because he can be invincible when he uses his Q ability, so he's not going to get hit by lightning at all. And Wash is good because he just got... He's, he does everything, frankly. Everybody knows that Wash is amazing because he literally does everything in the game. But again, if you spec into balance bar damage, you're going to absolutely just clobber these things. The way you do this as a survivor is you see the thing spawn in and they get possessed. Well, a lot of times what these players are going to do is cast lightning right away because they want to get one out. So just dodge right away. Just know what's coming and dodge or dodge twice. You have enough stamina for it. Dodge, dodge. Wait for the lightning to come out. You dodged out of it and then you're good to go. And then after the dodge, you just pounce on the unit. It's going to try to run away, but if everybody's sitting there clobbering it with a big, heavy stumble weapon, it's eventually going to lose its balance bar and then you can just down it and that's it. And to further complement this, you have leaders on the team like Annie. Annie, when she gets leveled up, is absolutely incredible at dealing with balance bars because... Attacks by you or your teammates within this aura effect radius cause more damage to the balance bar elite of boss units and elite units. So, we already said that you can just clobber things with a good strong melee warrior, but Annie here is also coming to the party not only with her slugger skill at 25, but also with her skill at level 10, which increases balance bar damage. So Annie's a great pick against the puppeteer. A Leader Ash also does some things with his skill where he causes balance bar damage as well. There's a lot of different things going on to just completely obliterate balance bars. Don't worry, there's a lot of counters here. And then actually one of the best counters in the whole game to this is Support Ash. Reason being is that anytime Support Ash nails a heavy attack, he can go ahead and heal the team for what I believe is 35 health. So if you get Ash equipped with something like a combat knife, he's like a ballerina, just ta-ta, 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 just cutting into units. And he's going to attack much faster than your Demi Eligos can if you're playing Puppeteer. Much faster. Which means he can outheal the damage that Demi Eligos does. And some other really interesting things to know about this alternative healing skill is that it also works while a finisher is happening. So if let's say your warrior presses F on really any unit, but let's say the Demi Eligos, and you're they're going through that whole invincibility frames animation, during that where the unit's basically already dead anyway, Ash can just keep slashing <laughs> with his knife and you'll keep healing off of that creature that's already being finishered. So <laughs> support Ash is an amazing counter to this. You might be wondering, well, what about Hunter Ash? Can't he just stop a possession? That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, but no. Reason being is if you go ahead and take a look at his skill, it says activating the ability exercises the demon from any possessed survivor or basic unit. However, if this is used on a possessed elite unit, which Demi Eligos is our elite units, or a boss unit, the ability drains some infernal energy from the demon, and the infernal energy reduction is 15%. Frankly, that's not enough. If a demon is sitting there with 200 infernal energy and they power possess, 15% is laughable. They're still going to be sitting in that unit forever. So Hunter Ash is not the pick at all. 
Now, if the demon is going really big on survivor possessions, then yeah, Hunter Ash is great. But if they're going for the Demi Eligos thing, Hunter Ash isn't going to do anything. On top of the fact that Hunter Ash is a ranged unit, so he uses guns, and guns also are not good against Demi Eligos. So really, when you take a look at it, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, honestly, Kelly could be good if she goes Meat Hammer, but let's just say six, seven, and then Cheryl's good against anybody. Eight ways to go ahead and deal with this build that's cycling about that people think is ridiculously broken and overpowered. If you've been having trouble dealing with Puppeteer, it's probably because of the things we're talking about in this video regarding the Demi Eligo strap. So I hope this was helpful and you learned a thing or two about what's going on with these puppeteers. If you didn't know about this and you're a demon player, well, have fun. You're going to be able to pub stomp because if people don't know what they're doing, this is very strong. But if you're on the survivor side and you get done watching this video, you'll be able to take care of these puppeteers no problem at all. You'll absolutely stomp them. If you want to learn more about the game, we stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Link is in the description and also the top comment. If you want to see more informational videos and things to learn about how this game is evolving, please subscribe down below. We'll cover stuff as they change, if they address things, etc, etc. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.